and a member of the RTSA committee for the New Zealand chapter. Uh, and I'll be facilitating this presentation today. So for this webinar, we have presenters um, Renata Smith from Auckland Transport, Adrian Price also from Auckland Transport, and Leon Thomas from Oricon. I'll introduce them a little bit more, but first of all, I'll just start off with a little bit of information about um, RTSA. So RTSA is the Railway Technical Society of Australasia. It's a trans-Tasman organization um, for anyone with a professional interest in railways. And some of the objectives are to stimulate the active contribution and participation of its members in the development and dissemination of railway technology and management knowledge, support the business of railway industry and provide for continuing professional development of its members, and also promote close working relationships uh, amongst participants in the railway industry. We have regular face-to-face -face CPD events, webinars, training and education, awards, knowledge banks, conferences and study tours. So if you're interested in joining the RTSA, they're quite reasonable price. It's $80 for full members, $40 for graduates um, less than five years in, and it's free for retirees and students. So if you're interested, pop over to uh, the link below, www.rtsa.com.au slash membership. Okay, now I'll just introduce our speakers for today. So we have... Uh, um, Leon Thomas, who is a design manager for Auckland Transport, Renata Smith, the Airport to Botany Rapid Transit Program Director for Auckland Transport, and Adrian Price, who is a Specialist Project Manager for Auckland Transport. Leon is a, um, as well as Project Manager and, and Design Manager, he is a Chartered Engineer working for Oricon with over 14 years experience in delivering complex engineering projects in commercial, public and industrial sectors. He worked for 10 years in the United Kingdom before coming to New Zealand. Uh, and as the design manager for Pūnui Interchange, Leon led the development of the design and has provided oversight throughout the construction phase. Renata oversees the development of the investment cases for strategic transport projects in South and East Auckland. She also began Auckland Transport's program, um, program director for Airport to Botany Rad Rapid Transit, that's A to B, um, program since 2018 overseeing the development of two key business cases for the program and delivery of A to B's first stage of works. Puhanui Station forms the largest component of the first stage and will be A to B's first station to be operational. Renata has 19 years experience in leading transport planning projects in both local government and consultancies in New Zealand and the UK. Adrian is a project management consultant and has been working on the Puhanui Station since 2016 as project manager throughout the early design and con early and contractor involvement phases, and as engineer's representative throughout the construction. He previously worked for Waka Kotahi and Auckland Transport, where he has held several roles, including public transport development manager in Auckland's transport infrastructure team. He was involved in a range of projects around Auckland, including Otahu Interchange Station project, um, grade separation of Sarawea Street, level crossing in Newmarket, and numerous rail station upgrades. Prior to that, he has worked in London for several years at the Department of Transport and Booz Allen Hamilton's Transport Advisory Team. So uh, to kick off the presentation, um, Renata is going to provide, sorry, yeah, Renata is going to provide some of the, um, the strategic um, reasons for Punamu Station, why it exists, and then Leon and Adrian will get into a bit more detail of the actual project itself, the engineering and design decisions. Um, and just to note throughout this, if you get any questions, um, pop them in the chat, and at the end, uh, we'll you know, read them out and get a chance to, um, to run through those. So pop them in the chat and they'll be um, answered at the end. Okay, so um, with that, I think I'll hand over to uh, Renata. Okay, thank you, Tim. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through, uh, I'll provide you with a bit of a strategic context um, to uh, place Punui in the overall Southwest Gateway program. So if I... Just move this along to the set of slides. Here we go. Right, so Purnui um, Station has been progressed under the umbrella of the Southwest Gateway Program. Um, we've developed an overarching program because there are multiple partners to this and it reflects um, the geographic context of the area. So um, if you look at that diagram there, the yellow um, orange to the left is Auckland Airport's area. Now, Auckland Airport is actually a road controlling authority in its own right, and so it owns all of that road net 
network within that orange area, including a strategic connection to and from that peninsula, um, uh, Punoi Bridge, um, which is just indicated there by a bit of a graphic. Um, and then moving onwards, that green um, corridor, there's a state highway connection around Auckland Airport, um, state highway 20A and 20A and, and, and um, 20B, and that's managed by Wapakatahi, who looks after all the state highways within New Zealand. And then further beyond, all of that road network um, is under Auckland Transport's um, remit. And so for us to um, provide transport solutions and improvements you know, for Aucklanders and, and, and our customers in the area, we really needed to be working together um, within a um, overarching program. And so that's why that was developed. The other um, program partners, Te Akitai Waihua, so this Punui precinct is, um, they've had long standing history there. And so they are the uh, local mana whenua um, custodians of that precinct. And so they are part of um, this partnership. So um, the key strategic objectives of the program is, as it says there, to improve travel choices and accessibility for South and East Aucklanders. Um, there is a great need for it, though. There's a lot of deficiencies out there at the moment. Um, people very much struggling to get to and from where they need to be. And so um, there is also an overarching objective to so a lot of the proposed improvements within this program, um, you know, spans you know, 15, 20 years. There's media, um, minor, moderate, and, and major works proposed. But there's definitely a drive to um, at the time when this was set up in 2018 to deliver something sooner rather than later. And sooner rather than later meant three years from when we um, developed this program, so within 2021. And, and here we are today. And so the Pumui station that um, you know, we're opening uh, into July forms part of that um, early deliverables program. Um, so as I said, uh, just a little bit of background. I'll, I'll glance over this quite quickly. But the program um, was set up under some urgency. Um, as you see over to the left there in 2016, um, a, quite a bit of headlines around how the condition to and from that peninsula, that Auckland Airport area, was actually um, really getting intolerable and we're starting to get quite a lot of headlines like that. Um, and to the right there is just some commentary um, from, from our customers, um, you know, so the trip there took longer than the trip to, to Sydney or um, the middle one there is quite an important one. Um, it's really hard to, um, for our staff to get here on time because the buses so hit and mess because they're stuck in congestion. Um, that one's quite an important one because that area, Auckland Airport, is actually a really important employment zone. And, and, and you'll see that a lot of the um, investment improvements um, is directed at um, providing um, a better, you know, better travel choices for, for those that work there. Um, so, you know, Pune Station, so to the left there, one of the, you know, the whys, why are we doing this, is um, for public transport options. It really took long. We had a, a bus that took um, that was every half an hour and did a bit of a run. To the right there is just the accessibility maps, um, airports there in the dark red area. And so there's, it pulls employers, um, employees from across the region, but just need, um, a lot from the local sort of south, southwest and east area. Um, and essentially, they had pretty poor public transport options to and from their employment zone. And to the left there is just a bit of a map showing the um, PT mode here for South and East Auckland with Auckland Airport to the left um, at the bottom. Um, and really, compared to the rest of the region, very much uh, stood out as um, low public transit uptake, 3.5% for the area um, compared to the Auckland average of 7% and Auckland Airport in particular only 2%. So, um, you know, it, yeah, it really stood out as, as, as um, public transport is not seen as a viable option. Um, and then to the right there is um, another sort of um, lens to it, um, quite a lot of socioeconomic um, disparity. And if you think about, you know, equal opportunities for all within Auckland, uh, equal opportunities for all Aucklanders to, to access uh, jobs and schools and places they need to be, um, the south west and the south east and the, those green areas really stood out. Um, and so, um, and then on top of that, um, we also have a lot of growth in the area. So. Um, Auckland Airport is a major employment zone now and will continue to be so and even more so into the future. Um, a lot of growth proposed in the south. Um, we've got a lot of new housing. We've got a housing uh, crisis in Auckland. There's a lot of housing proposed in Manukau in the south. And then in the east, Botany and the eastern suburbs, you know, 130,000 people there today, forecast 160,000 um, really poor connections to and from it. So um, the Southwest Gateway program was developed and one of the key outcomes from that was, hey, we need to improve travel choices um, for people in this area. Um, and a key recommendation was to um, develop a rapid transit service, a dedicated congestion-free public transport option to connect with the other rapid transit services planned along this area. 
And so Airport to Botany um, was developed, and as you can see, it's that dark blue line there. And Pune Station is a um, state is one of the 12 stations within that rapid transit line. Um, White. I won't use the pointers. So you can just see it there in the middle, and it's the, low, uh, the closest heavy rail station to Auckland Airport. Um, it will be built over stages. This is a um, 1.5 billion dollar um, uh, uh, project, um, and so Pune Station um, right now it will be developed in two stages, and the first stage is being, is what's being built now. Um, and, and that encompasses stage one of this program, and then we've got stage two, stage three, and stage four subject to funding over the next five to ten years um, to deliver this outcome here. Um, and the intent there is to provide an attractive, viable travel uh, public transport option for South and East Aucklanders, including to improve access to and from Auckland Airport. Um, so what does that do? If, to the left there is a map of the uh, Auckland's rapid transit network. Um, it shows the, um, the, the final outcome. A lot of these don't exist. Um, so the dark red line there is the southern rail line. That's operational there today. And the yellow line that you see through there is the eastern line. And, and so both of those exist today. There are two heavy rail lines. Um, Premier Station, as you can see there, is ideally located um, for those two lines. And that's one of the major reasons. So very frequent um, train services. And so it's, a, it's really an important hub. Um, and then if you look at the Auckland Airport section, the gray line is the proposed future. Uh, light rail or CC2M as it's called now that's being progressed by the current government and to the top north and the east is a, is a teal green and that's Eastern Busway which is another busway type of transit facility that's currently being built now. So Airport to Botany, once it's in place, um, will be the first orbital rapid transit line for um, the Auckland region and it connects four rapid transit lines along it. And it gives you these improved um, travel time options uh, in, in the graphic there and with our hot fare. So that starts really getting um, the public transport is an attractive option. And Pune Station is really critical to that because of its uh, location on the southern and eastern line. Just quickly on the left, just gives you the graphic from an overall, once it's all in place, what you get out of it. So you suddenly get 275,000 people additional within 45 minutes of Auckland Airport in their employment zone. Um, so zooming in on Pune Station, how am I going for time? Um, to the left there is a photo of the old um, train station, Very just a basic train station really. Um, uh, yeah, uh, a bit of shelter, but to the bottom there, it just shows you, though, the uh, bus network that we had. So the orange line, you can see the little thin orange line on the southern side was the, our old bus network, and it had to go to Papa Toy Toy Station north of Punui, and then dip back down. So it started from Manaka, sorry, dip, went all the way up to Papa Toy Toy, dip back down, and headed towards the airport. The reason for that was because Punui Station, as it was, wasn't physically able to ex um, have bus vehicles come and, and park and, and interchange with it. So buses could not dock um, at the previous old Pune station, so we weren't able to use it, and therefore we sent our buses north to Papa Territory and then back down again to, to Auckland Airport. That's a deviation, obviously, um, you know, longer trip, not particularly custom attractive proposition for our customers. What our new station does on the right there, it actually becomes catalyst for the new PT network. Um, and so yeah, the dark orange line is the um, is the... Oh, you do want the pointer? Sorry, let me see. Use pointer. There we go. All right, so... Oh, come here. It's not very user-friendly. So, so that's the orange thin line there, sorry. Um, and it actually did this loop. It went all along like this. And it went to Papa Toyko, which is over here, back down to Monaco. This is where Punui is. So Punui and Papa Toyko both have the southern and eastern line. But Pune is the closer one, but we couldn't um, physically have our buses docked there. And so to the right, one of the key things that the new Pune station upgrade does is it enables us to do this more direct route. And so the new airport link, new e-buses, basically does this every 10 minutes. Um, and between Pune station and the airport, it's 10 to 12 minutes with bus priority. So that's, that's you know, providing a much more attractive proposition for our customers. Um, if I then move on, um, so we, we did a lot of um, customer insight work. We talked to our customers, um, you know, about printing station proposals. I can talk about slide for me, yep. And so as you, um, and a lot of the comments, printing station, sorry, I'll just come off this now, was just a really basic um, suburban station, not perhaps the most attractive area of Auckland. In fact, if you're in South Auckland, if you're a resident of South Auckland, most people wouldn't know where Pune is. It's not a place, right? it's a suburban residential area and a 
not the, you know, perhaps the most attractive place to hang out either. So one of the key things was, okay, if you're asking us to use that as an interchange, then we really need it to be a safe place. We need it to be attractive. You know, asking us to transfer a bit, you know, bus and a train, how are we going to do that? It really needs to work for us. It needs to be seamless, shelter, canopies, and so on. Um, and so we took this account, um, the team did, into the design. And bought there at the bottom, create a public transport way to Auckland, because that's also its job. And so the look and feel of it um, speaks to that. And I really should have added another statement that came really strong from our customers, which was seamless interchange. Really needs to be as easy as possible if you, if you want us to do this. Um, and this is the last graphic, really just talks to the staging at Punui Station. So um, at the top is stage one, that's what's been built now. Um, with the design, sorry, that's not very interesting. Um, so the glass facade fronting the north there. Um, so to the right is the airport link bus. It's currently a normal bus. It comes in. Let's see if I can do that. No, can't use the pointer. All right, okay, there we go. So it comes in and it goes around like that, okay? And to airports to the right in Monaco to this. So customers get off here, they have to come up and then back down and the team will talk a bit more about that. That's, and to the left shows you there's a bit of a dog leg in the network. So um, from the airport, buses come along, service coordination station come back out and then go around the road network back onwards to Monaco. In the future, we'll have a more direct bespoke rapid transit um, bridge which is what you see in the diagram below, which is how this whole station has been designed. So it's a station that's been design, designed to cater for that with future proof for it. Um, and the idea is that customers then get off here and come straight down to the platform. So I think it makes much more sense when you see it that way, but we've um, done the right thing by building it um, this way at the outset. And then at, at this point, you will switch to more rapid transit type vehicles. So um, that's the really staging strategy. Um, I'll hand over to is it yourself, Adrian, next. Is it Lane? Thanks, Renata. Uh, kia ora koutou. Hello, everyone. Um, just to just to follow on from that. So before we before I go into the specifics of the, the design further, um, I think it's just key to acknowledge. Um, the the amount of input and and time and effort and um, collaboration uh, from the design team, um, the AT, um, Kiwi Rail, wider stakeholders involved in the project. Um, this really was um, quite a a, um, a complex uh, project, um, given the amount of um, nodes. And, and transport links that it touches um, and in this location and, and, and obviously its significance. So um, the the design team there, Oricon and Jasmax, um, Jasmax led the architecture and the landscape architecture. Um, and you'll see from the station itself, um, I mean, that talks to the architectural di design, just, just the pure visual um, um, outcome of, of how what, what they've achieved um, and then from an engineering perspective Oricon have undertaken pretty much all of the engineering um, bar some fire engineering by fire connect um, Alta Innovo put, uh, put some supporting um, functions there from a, a planning and, and a costing perspective um, Wahi Wairua um, again played a, a key part from um, giving us input from a Maori Art, um, so then the Maori artists for the uh, station, and and you'll see prop, props not from these slides, but you um, if you visit the station, you'll see the um, the influence that they've had um, in in bringing bringing that through, and then um, finally, last but not least, uh, McConnell Dowell and their their partners built environs. Um, Again, behind each of these names, there's there's a lot of sub trades and a lot of a lot of um, people who've really worked hard on this project. So it's, it's key to um, acknowledge those before we go on any further. Um, so I'm pressing the arrow instead of on on here. Um, so, so here's the um, just to put that into perspective. So probably at its peak, this is kind of a, a, an overview of all the different disciplines and um, inputs required. So anything from planning, resource consent, 
um, through to earthing and bonding. Obviously, because it touches both rail and road, uh, we've got uh, road safety assessments, um, a lot of interfaces with Kiwi Rail, um, human factors, um, systems engineering. Uh, so there, there are a lot of different disciplines involved in the um, in the upfront work, but obviously the actual en engineering itself. So through from structural engineering, the architecture, um, building services. Um, so to to put that into context, it's 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 essentially the way I view the station is um, a building sitting on a bridge, um, and we'll come to that in a bit more detail. But um, there are obviously uh, many different interfaces um, and challenges associated with with that. Um, so just moving on so the the just to cover the functional basis of the the design so um, again because because we're working across both rail and um, and road with the road um, I'm saying road but that's bus uh, car and cyclists um, as well as pedestrians um, so there's there's a lot of different transport nodes to, to pick up on here so the actual functional design of the station um, goes obviously beyond a, a, a rail station um, in terms of the interface with the rail and ticketing and gating etc. Um, we're then on to um, how the bus bus turning circles work, um, passenger information, making sure there's continuity in terms of the wayfinding. Um, people can find their way from a bus to a train and uh, without any difficulty. Um, and then along with that obviously cycling um, connections and then also the the, the key thing um, with this being a, a stopover place it's providing that um, amenity as well um, and that extra level of comfort for someone who's who's waiting in between uh, so it's just some of the concepts that were considered so um, at grade I could that that was an option that was that was um, considered in, in the early stages, as well as a tunnel underneath the rail. Obviously, a lot of cost and, and um, disruption involved in in that option. Um, really, the the grade separated option that we we resolved on um, has come about through to as Renata was saying earlier um, about that future proofing. So I'll touch on that a bit further um, in the, one of the next slides. Uh, again, as Renato was saying, accelerated program, so unlocking those early early benefits of utilizing what is essentially the existing infrastructure um, with the view to having that future ability to unlock um, further infrastructure as, as time moves on. Um, again, as, as, Renato, as Renato was saying, that safety and amenity um, and passenger comfort and a key again key transport node so seamless interaction uh, seamless sorry seamless interconnectivity and transition between rail and bus um, and and vice versa um, so again passenger information and wayfinding and that visual connection with the airport as well um, and then finally designing for the future so again the rapid transport network that we touched on earlier um, considering the patronage now and into the future and then any additional up mains and down mains that um, that have been planned on, on that line. Um, so just to uh, just a quick overview of the 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 station itself, the building itself. Um, as I said the architecture of, of the, the design is um, really touching on those points. Um, the the pr providing the sheltering um, and the um, uh, uh, that safety um, of uh, for passengers was a real key thing um, for with, uh, the architecture aspects of the design and really just having also the station as a as a almost like a landmark a point of reference and a gateway um, into into Auckland so the the roof itself um is 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 arched as you can see there and and that's really providing that look of of a shelter um as well as um the wayfinding aspect of it so you know that that pointing of the of a direction of, of facing north um direction of travel in into auckland um and then the interiors of the um 
of the state of the concourse itself so again really important to provide that um, light and uplifting um, environment um, and that continuity with with the airport and um, so you can actually see there the outlook, outlook to the airport in the in the background um, warmth through the colors and textures used so in in as you can see the roof there there's a, um, a composite uh, material a, an inner wood uh, cladding um, that's that's used on the on the roof um, to provide and all these tones and the the hone slab um, provide that um, through through the design itself um, visual connectivity so I'm just going to use the pointer if it's going to work um, it may or may not be showing on your screen but just um, just the curved thing uh, the curved um, structure just to the left there past the escalators is the uh, is the customer service center and again providing that open open view um, where the operators can can have full visibility undisturbed visibility of of the whole of the concourse to see people coming up the escalators pit people people going down the escalators um, and up and down the lifts and approaching um, from the from the stairs at either side which I'll touch on in a minute um, there's also again through that north facade there's a there's a huge um, uh, natural warmth through the solar gains picked up on that um, curtain wall facade and on either side as well as um, the stations actually other than the pods which, which we refer to them which are these which is the customer service center and there's a retail pod as well which I'll pick up on in a minute um, it is uh, naturally ventilated um, so again with those solar gains and then the, um, the natural um, breeze coming through at the open station at the back Hi Leon, just, just adding to what you were saying, um, there's also quite a lot of work with uh, Oricon on human factors to understand how the building would be used, how all can transport operates facilities, so there was a lot of feedback in terms of how the customer service would operate and how it would uh, work under degraded services or emergency situations as well, which um, has, has all informed the building design. Thanks, Adrian. And um, and on the right there, you can see the the thing um, in in its in the flesh. Um, so the so this was taken probably a few months back now. But um, yeah, that's the that's the concourse uh, in, during construction. Um, you probably pick up there as well. There's there's open lifts. Um, as, as, sorry, glazed lifts. So again, providing that visibility um, and that that safety uh, for anyone using the station, feel of feeling of safety. Um, Sip, Sip Ted was was quite a, a a huge consideration on on the project. Um, and also, again, we've got CCTV throughout the throughout the station. Um, uh, and and largely you know, through through the canopies and the station itself, it's really about protecting the passengers um, from from the elements from the uh, from wind and rain. Uh, so this is quite a good view um, to to help explain the station, the building um, in its in its form. But um, just on the left there, you'll I'll just get back to the pointer if it's going to work for me. Um, I'm not quite sure if this point is working, but I'll, I'll, I'll point anyway so I can, I can refer to it myself. So just on the left there is the, is the bus interchange. Uh, so passengers, um, it can either walk up or get off the bus there or cycle. Um, and that, that's essentially the approach from the station on that side. Um, we've got a ramp that runs up to a door. And... Um, and then a, and a set of escalators taking up to the concourse level. Um, on the on the left hand side there, you'll also see uh, which is this is the west of the station, just for a point of reference. And um, there's also a staircase up there as well. So again, people just providing different options in terms of um, either stairs, escalators, or there's also a lift just hidden on that side as well. Um, so again, accessibility. Um, uh, wheelchair users um, coming up in or off the bus um, or, or, or um, coming up from this side um, a range of options to, to get up to the concourse level um, you may just be able to pick out the gate line there um, which is 
just in front of the customer service center. So there, where's, where's my, uh, where the pointer is there. And again, customer service center um, have, has good visibility across the gate line and as well as some of these um, sort of meet and greet areas um, throughout the station. Something I didn't know earlier, we, we will touch on it a bit more in, in, in a minute, is that there's a kiss and ride facility as well for, for vehicles um, providing drop off uh, just to the left over there. Um, and then once uh, people are through the through the um, through the gate, uh, we can then go down the escalators. Or there's also a, a, a central stair um, down to the platform. And something also to note: um, so if you if uh, for, for passengers coming off the train uh, and, and getting off at Purunui, um we've then got in in order of um, what would uh, approach them is um, is the stairs. So so passengers who are faster paced, um, for want of a better word, as as are able to um, to go up the stairs, and then those who who, who choose can use the escalators, um, feed round and use the escalators, and then finally there's the lift at the um, the north face. Um, so lifts on both platforms um, and then there's also a lift off to the S, uh, east side as well so again walk up passengers um, from the east um, can use either a, a staircase on the east or, or use the lift um, and also, also a point to note there, there was an existing um, pedestrian bridge that cut across the rail um, from east to west uh, which was um, as part of the design it was key for us to um, replace that essentially so so that's now this this staircase as well as the the front um, face of the the station actually replaces that function so that passenger um, people who are uh, not passengers, um, non-paid. It's separating paid from non-paid. So, so people still have the um, public still have the ability to to walk up and and come across the front of the station and safely um, go from across the rail um, uh, and and still still have that function available to them. And I guess I'm sorry, just uh, Leon, before you move yeah, on. Right, I guess right. one of the challenges is in stage. Yeah, just just in stage one. Um, as you would have seen, the, the access into the building is from that western side. Um, so you've, you've got uh, the approach into the station isn't ideal, but it is future-proof so that when we get to the, um, the ultimate stage for the station and there is a bus rapid transit bridge, then, then people will seamlessly come off, come off the um, buses to the north of the building and then just have a, a straight north to south um, trip. So the wayfinding should be very clear and it should be a very intuitive station. Yeah, and, the, and, and the, that extends to um, the gate lines themselves. So we've, we've as Adrian said there, that this, um, there's some, some thought as to how this gate line will be repositioned once um, this side essentially becomes redundant and, and this, there's a bridge across the front of the station in which um, um, people will disembark here and then and then come through these doors and then be able to go straight down through the um, or through the gates and then straight down onto the onto the platform. Probably also also worth noting on on the east side here. There's also pr um, provision within the station to add in additional escalators um, for when um, additional rail lines are added in the future. So just on the e on the west side on the on the vehicle areas. Um, so some of the key things um, we needed to feature in the design um, were obviously with there's the there's the bus stops for the airport and Monaco, um, as well as replacement rail replacement bus stops in the event that there's um, any rail cancellations. Um, a kiss and ride facility, so I'll touch on that in a bit more um, in a minute, and as well as some short-term parking, um, and again that cycle, cycle and pedestrian friendly um, was really key, um, key to the design. So this is a, a snapshot, a, a plan view of the of the west side. So, so this is Poonui Road and uh, Kenderdine Road, and there were there was 
it was actually brought into the design to look at this um, look at this junction itself, and um, a lot of different options were considered in terms of traffic light system or um, a roundabout, and and through the road safety assessments and a number of others, um, it was landed on a roundabout. Um, so vehicles uh, vehicles can come through the roundabout, and this is the kiss and ride um, that I was talking about. So um, some uh, Temporary. The, the intention in this is really, as it, in its name, it's a kiss and ride. So, so it's a drop-off facility where um, people can pull in and um, drop off passengers here. But there is provision for some short-stay parking um, as well. Um, buses come through here. Uh, oh, sorry, that's that's it's just lagging a bit. Here we go. So buses buses come through this way and go around. Oh yeah, someone else is controlling that. That's good. <laughs> glad, glad someone can control that. Um, so yeah, so so. Well, so um, so Leon, Leon, sorry, yeah, it's me controlling. Uh, oh, it. I think for some reason we seem to have control. I'm trying to get it back to you if you like. Uh, no, no, it's all right. You, 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 I'll just keep on. I'll keep on talking. But you can see there. there the um, bus only um, pass through there, and then there's the the two stops. One being for the airport, and one being for Monaco. Um, the, the width of the what we referred to as the finger there, which is the paving that runs between the kiss and ride and the bus area, um, so that's quite a wide um, um, area for for pedestrians to walk you through. But if you if if you think of what's actually in there, what's not shown in there is are the canopies. So obviously there's some structure to contend with there, as well as um, potentially cyclists. Um, but a lot uh, the the thing again to consider in this station is w there will be people arriving with luggage um, going to and from the airport. So just providing that et extra width and comfort, um, a bit more um, uh, providing a bit more safety um, for those uh, using the station and approaching from this side. And again, through n numerous different um, nodes of transport. Um, and. It's also probably worth touching on the uh, the fact that just to the south there, there's the uh, there's a Kohanga Rail, uh, the, the um, a kindergarten. Um, so uh, again, maintaining access through to them um, was was key in the design, as well as not impeding on on their amenity. So we we've actually so there's a, an acoustic um, fence that runs along the south side of there to to provide some. Um, dampening of the the noise from um, from the traffic uh, uh, increased traffic. Let's move on one. Um, and then this so this is the east uh, from the from the east of the station. Um, so there is a, a small drop off facility on the east side, but um, again, there's not not a uh, a whole um, lot of traffic around around this side. Um, it's predominantly the traffic approaching from this side will be cyclists and uh, pedestrians. Um, so the the area over this side of the station is um, predominantly landscaping, and you can see there there's um, sort of a community um, feel to it, uh, an open open sort of urban realm space. Um, uh, providing um, that that um, level of comfort as well as op some options around coffee carts and and um, for people approaching the station from this side. Um, so I won't labour on that side too much. Unless is there anything else to add there, Adrian, on the east? Um, I guess the only thing to mention which we haven't touched on yet and it's not really shown in the renders is the work of um, Wahi Wairira, who are the Mana Whenua nominated artists that we're working with. So there is a, a, a theme of the Puanui stream that we're, we're expressing through the, the building. Um, so one of the items that um, we're working on at the moment is um, having a sort of riverbank style effect to those uh, approach pathways um, and then that flows on through the building where there's um, the where slab within the building has a reflective quality, quality to give that impression of water. Okay, um, so just some of the key challenges um, that we faced in the design. Um, so as you'll probably appreciate, designing around uh, live 
and, and construction around live rail is, is always a challenge within itself, but um, the, the geology um, of the site um, we found to be a particular challenge um, really around this um, what's called lignite, so there's there's a specific form um, within this area, um, that's actually within the rock that um, called lignite, and so we did a number of uh, test holes um, to prove um, the piling and the, sorry, the, the geology, um, and the piling design um, was done to take that into account, so some of the piles, um, the, the foundation of the piles um, in the, uh, actually go over 30 meters down into the ground. Um, the stage itself, as, as you can appreciate, there's, there's a lot of um, structural considerations to take into account, as well as seismic, um, with with, um, with us being in in New Zealand. So the um, the forces and and um, yeah, to consider in the design um, quite substantial. So. The lignite um, is essentially a, a compacted layer of material that um, we're unable to found the bottom of the um, pile on. Um, so therefore, we we had to find where that was and be confident that we'd gone through it into the into the rock formation. Um, so again, that was one of the challenges, as well as the, all that associated around it, in terms of actually getting on site to do some investigations around the operational rail. Um, so again, AT engaged um, some early works to um, to do some of that proof boring um, activities and give us the confidence um, and the information that we could feed back into the design. Um, another real big consideration, as you can imagine, the the amount of impermeable area or the, the surface area from the, um, the bus area required, um, as well as some of the, the, the station itself, um, increased dramatically in, in comparison to the existing arrangement. Um, so with that comes the challenges of, of stormwater um, and anyone who in Auckland especially recently, will we'll appreciate that um, stormwater is always a challenge um, uh, and, and the, the quantity that we get of it. So um, the, west, the west side and the bus interchange, this was, this was quite an iterative design approach because it wasn't just a case of throwing down some ge geometry of where the curves are going to be and, and go for it. Um, with that came the balance of the trade-off between um, the, the stormwater design and actually being able to detain um, as much of the stormwater on site as possible to um, not overload the existing infrastructure in the area. So these these detention ponds um, you see here, that's essentially what they're doing. They're providing that um, that sort of one in one in um, a hundred year event um, storm um, detention of the water. And in addition to that, we, we also, um, and I'm just going to throw out this one, you can, you can sort of get a picture there of the amount of surface area that we have through the station itself. So this is the central rail platform, but there's also the bus um, uh, canopy off to, the, off to the west here, as well as the central canopy and the roof itself. So all of that all of that rainwater that's that um, collected um, is is funneled down and actually goes through an under under track crossing and then finds its way into a um, a retention tank a stormwater retention tank that is underneath um, the bus area on, on off to the west and that water is then reused um, as grey water for um, hosing down platforms hosing, cleaning the roof itself as well as flushing toilets. Um, so again, um, environment, um, environmental considerations, um, but really, again, that trade-off between stormwater um, and not overloading the existing um, infrastructure, as well as not not increasing the risk to the surrounding uh, surrounding properties, was a real was a real challenge. Um, and through that, there was. I guess Leon. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, we should probably add that um, we work closely with Mana Whenua on this as well, and, and I think there's an expectation these days when we're building these kind of um, facilities that they will take into account how we can improve stormwater quality before it goes into the main system. So they were quite supportive of this idea that we reuse as much of the water as possible, but then it gets treated as naturally as possible before going into the main system. Oh, 
Okay. And then just the last one, I'll, I'll leave you to talk to this, Adrian. You'll probably be able to cover it off better than better than I can. Okay, yeah, yeah I can um, sort of just cover a few of the key risks of the construction period. So I guess the main the main, I guess, source of risks was the, the tight program. So originally we were working to uh, complete everything by the start of 2021, and it was time to be ahead of the 2021 APEC meeting and the America's Cup. Um, we've got a, a, it's a complicated building, I, I guess, is, is probably the easiest way to say it. it. It is architecturally quite impressive, but it's also relatively difficult to build. There's a lot of curves and shapes and, and so on on the, on the uh, building. At one point the roof structure um, was going to require a machine that was based in Dubai, the only one in, in the world, and um, we were having to find ways of, of bringing it over. We managed to um, tweak the design a little bit uh, to, to mean that we could use other machines, and that was um, brought in from Australia. Um, it, the rail environment complicates things, so um, something we've often faced is with these larger projects, so the contractors are often relatively unfamiliar with the challenges of rail. So things like temporary earth bonds and uh, the rail protection requirements um, are often uh, something that, that take a little while before contractors get educated on and, and start to factor them into their programs effectively. Um, some of the elements had a, quite a long lead time, so we had to order things like indented steel a long time before we needed it. Um, and we needed to ensure that we had those rail resources like uh, rail protection officers and electrical safety officers around throughout the whole of the building, which started, the main work started in September 2019, that's when McConnell Dow started on site. Uh, and there's a, a lot of reliance on uh, block of lines, rail uh, positions, and um, night works with electrical isolations, and productivity on those can be variable. Sometimes um, you can plan to get access to the rail corridor at 7 a.m., and you can end up at 10 a.m., you're still waiting to get on, so that can have a big impact on productivity. So I guess in terms of mitigating that, there are a few things we did. So uh, one of the things was uh, closing the station. So at that point, Auckland Transport really hadn't closed any stations during construction. So it's now happening with Mount Eden for the city rail link. But I guess we were the first to, to close a station. We'd always tried to work um, in an operational environment prior to that. And I think that that was essential to us um, being able to complete this, this uh, later this month. We would have uh, been a lot slower if we'd had to allow for trains and passengers to continue. It would have been um, health and safety risks would have been a lot harder to manage as well. Um, we also, um, we, as part of that, we um, engaged early with the contractor, so we had a, a early contractor involvement contract. That helped a lot in the sense that we could get that constructability advice early. We could start some early uh, enabling works. We could start conversations with KiwiRail earlier to talk about the methodology um, and, and some of the innovations used. So what's shown in the picture is that um, protection shield, so that was used so that we could crane over the rail corridor while trains were running. Um, that was something that, that uh, took a good year before we actually had that in, in there, a good year of discussion with KiwiRail um, to get them comfortable with the methodology. Uh, we did things like we added um, additional section isolator switches so that uh, we could turn off one of the mains. So at the moment, when you, when you de-energize the network there, um, prior to this project, you'd have to isolate both lines. So we added those um, so that meant you could turn off the down main or the up main. So if we were working on one side at night, trains could continue to run on the other, on the other track. Um, and in terms of RPO, um, Rail Protection Officer Resources, so Auckland Transport contracted, initially we contracted with Libet directly and then McConnell Dow later took that over and that allowed us to just, with the, with the control of the contract, we could just make sure we had the, the Protection Officer resource we needed for the job. Uh, we also put in track speed restrictions over the, the duration of the um, construction. I guess one thing we just probably need to touch on is COVID-19, so we didn't, we didn't have any um, expectation that was going to happen. I think that caught everybody by surprise, and unfortunately we had the alert level four right over the Easter blocker line, which was one of the key uh, rail shutdowns for us. So the four to five week shutdown we experienced translated into a little over 10 weeks delay to the program, and that's largely because we lost those key block of lines and had to make them up in shorter weekend block of lines and um, night works. So it had quite a bad uh, impact on the program, 
It did change the completion landscape a little bit as well, because as everyone's aware, the America's Cup and APEC were scaled down events in terms of the amount of uh, visitors to the country. Um, but I, I guess in terms of how that was mitigated, um, I, I, the Conaldale were very good at reacting rapidly to the changing situation. So they quickly put, brought in temperature checks um, at the gate, so anybody coming on site had to have a temperature check before they came on board. Um, additional wash sta stations, increasing the uh, frequency of cleaning. Um, there was also uh, introduction of, of work bubbles, so each team um, had its own pre-start and, and was kept completely separate from the other teams. Uh, there was also consideration of the mental health of, of everybody, so they worked closely with mates in construction, uh, who provided um, some counselling and support and advice to anybody who was feeling pressured, particularly people worried about losing their job or um, the effects on them of, of COVID. Um, and we also put in a project continuity plan, so we worked together, that was with uh, Oricon, uh, Auckland Transport and McConnell Dell, and that really got us that sort of emergency contact list and the ability to, to react quickly, I think, to, as, as the alert levels changed. Um, I think that covers probably the main risks, though, and I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Leon. Thanks, Adrian. Um, and yeah, I, th I think from a construction perspective, all the challenges that you mentioned there, just, just put it further into context of the the level of uh, craft that has gone into some of these trades um, and the, level, the the quality of the, the construction um, and the outcome, you, you'll, you'll see it in the flesh. Um, you know, there's, there's um, some, it's real hats off to the, uh, to the, to the contractors involved because um, this has not been um, an easy, easy construction by any means. Um, okay, so I think we're over to um, Q&A. With, um, back with Tim. Yes, th thank you very much, um, Renata, Adrian, and Leon. That was a quite a, a thorough presentation. I quite enjoyed that. Um, we, yeah, we've got a few questions that have come through. We've only got about five minutes left, so we'll, we'll try and get through what we can. Um, so first of all, was um, Todd, which is transport-orientated design, um, considered as part of the design of the station? And I guess that ties into essentially land use for the rest of the project, but um, maybe this one's for Renata. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I can answer three questions quickly if you like while I'm here. Um, I heard why wasn't Todd um, or has Todd been considered uh, was the first question will Bridge Street be retained and then park and ride facilities for long term passengers. I can whip through those if you're happy for me to do that Tim. Um, sure, okay. we'll start with the first one first. Yep. Yep. Yeah, alright. Um, so you know, a facility like this, as you can um, all see, is, um, it is a beautiful facility and it will definitely add value to the local area and, and uplift um, the local area. So, um, however, and, and so this, when Auckland Transport designs these types of things, we bear in mind to not preclude the ability to transit-oriented development. So what you see being built out there at the moment is, some, is what can be um, it fits within the existing footprint that um, Auckland Transport, Kia Rail and Auckland Council um, owned. And so we were able to move very quickly, deliver the station um, within that footprint. Now, it's, just, it's stage one. So Airport to Botany as a rapid transit facility will come along here in Pony Road. And Airport to Botany will require a, um, to go through a notice of requirement process. And so um, that you know, opportunities of future transit-oriented development um, can be considered as part of that more medium to longer term facility. Um, is, is the first answer to that question. But there's nothing that precludes transporting um, to occur um, around that station. So, Tim, sorry, did you want me to do, just end there? That's, that, that was the first question. Uh, you, know, you can ask about, um, the next question is, uh, yeah, will Bridge Street be retained? Mm -hmm. Yep, so Bridge Street will be retained. It's, uh, if those are familiar with the area, it's a, it's a local um, road just to the north of Punui um, Station, and it's a, it's a dog leg. So it will be retained. Um, airport Link does will go along there. So it'll, um, if you're coming from airport, it travels along Punui Road, um, stops off at the Punui Station, dips into the Punui Station, then comes back out and then uses Bridge Street. Um, in the future, we'll have that, fe that rapid transit bridge, so more direct route for, for the rapid transit, but that Bridge Street will stay there for local traffic. It's... Um, because the, the, the direct connection will be solely for rapid transit um, and cycles. 
Oh, thank you. Um, um, and can um, I just... Oh. Sorry, sorry, so um, the next one is, uh, has any consideration been given to long-term park and ride facilities for airport passengers? Yeah, so not at Punui Station. So Punui Station, if you um, dial up, is part of a network of the public transport system. And so its function and role is to connect our customers on with the southern and eastern line, um, which you know go across, uh, provide that, those onward connections for the region. So um, park and ride um, is available, say, at Papakura Station. So those wanting to use that, um, we'd expect them to use uh, the existing park and ride facilities there. Now, Auckland Airport um, do have their own park and ride facilities for long-term um, passengers, and so that's being provided by Auckland Airport. Thank you very much. Um, all right, next one, uh, are there any indoor facilities for you know coffee carts and food and that type of thing? Um, so I can probably answer that, Tim. Uh, oh, you, you, you can go, Lou. You want it? I've got, I'll just drop it and just running back to a uh, decent... Oh, that one will do. Um, yes, uh, the answer is yes. Um, so it, within the station on the paid side... Um, there we go. I figured out how to use it now at the very end of the presentation. Um, just on the so here's the gate line. So just on the um, so on the um, these were the pods we were referring to. So this is the the customer service centre pod um, with all the um, staff um, amenities. And on this side are the uh, customer amenities. So in there there will be there is provision for a, a fit out of a retail kiosk um, and then we have the toilets customer toilets there um, but then potentially there may there may be opportunities for um, other coffee carts and, and the like um, in, the, in the sort of external areas for the non-paid areas and I just just on that Leon um, Open Transport is, uh, is seeking expression of interest now for that um, that uh, retail kiosk. So, so while it, it won't be open on the opening of the reopening of the station, it's something that will follow later. Oh, thank you both. All right. Um, next one we have is: um, is, is there any consideration of running additional services to Punamu Station? I guess this maybe ties in with potential extra platforms, future proofing, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, is this additional bus like, uh, bus services, or is this the, oh, no, was no, a no, rail, rail. Um, to who, yeah. Um, yes, sort of. yeah, so so that's part of the reason for the the size of the I guess the concourse part of of the station. So it's quite it's quite large. So that that's um, to accommodate uh, QRL third and fourth um, rail lines. If I just um, see if I can, so oh, yes, I've got the pointer. So. The plan is that um, there's actually, it's not shown in the drawing, but there's actually a turn back here that would become the future third main. There's a provision that this uh, platform stub on the west could be expanded comparatively easily to a, to an island platform. And similarly, over here, QR are actually doing the work now for a, um, a, a replacement turn back, which would eventually become the fourth main, and again, there's space for a platform here. And then there is future-proof space for a fifth or sixth line, which would be, I guess, a replacement for the, for the turn back that currently sits here. That, that wouldn't be able to run past the station at the moment, so at the moment there's room for four lines. Um, in terms of the um, Tahuya service, um, so I think there is discussions underway now about um, that stopping potentially at Pernoy. Um, so in terms of infrastructure, uh, I mean, it could stop on the existing tracks now, uh, the stations now. I think the constraints are mostly around the operational um, ability to get the trains in and out during a busy, busy period. Um, but at the moment, we, we've got the space proofing, but, we, but at the time of the design, really, it, it was very um, uncertain as exactly you know, how, how large the Tahuya service would be, how many ca carriages and so on. So we've really just future-proofed to allow um, infrastructure to be added comparatively easily later. Nice one. Thanks, Adrian. All right, um, I think we're actually just we've just run out of time. There are a few more questions which, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to to get to. Um, but I'll just finish up with one last thing. Uh, I see on the website the station is due to open in three weeks' time, 26th of July. Is there any public celebration or opening ceremony um, planned? Yes, there is. Um, so like the, yeah. the the start of operations will be the 26th of July. That's the Monday. 
um, so that's when the trains will start again and the airport link will start to stop at the station. But on the Saturday the 24th of July, there's a public open day from 11am to 3pm. And that's an opportunity for people to come in, have a, a walk through the station, see what it's going to look like. Um, there's also going to be free um, activities and food and so on out on the western side as part of that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, thank you much, all, all three of you, um, Renata Smit, Leon Thomas, and Adrian Price. Um, it was a really informative presentation. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, and I hope everyone listening in today got something good out of it. Um, thank if you. Everyone, if you're interested in finding out more about RTSA or, um, or, or becoming a member, um, just follow the link to the website below. Um, that was for LinkedIn's presentation. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.